Hey, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Grief Drums, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a more in-depth look at Iana, and more specifically, three very nice uses for when you are playing as this operator. So Iana is the brand new attacker that is coming as part of Void Edge, and I was lucky enough to be invited to Ubisoft UK and then out to the six invitationals to play this operator and to give it a go and see what I thought. And I did put a video together following all of that, pretty much outlining where I felt she fit into the, the game and where she's going to fit into the meta. Subsequently, since then, I've had a lot longer to play as this op and a lot more opportunity to try different things out and see if there are different ways that she can be utilized short of just using her as a human drone. Now, initially, when I saw that her replicator would just consistently recharge, seeing that I could utilize this hologram to go running into a room figure out exactly what is going on inside of that room and then go in myself. It's like having a third drone, if not an infinite supply of drones. And initially I thought, you know what, this is going to be incredibly strong. And I think a couple of weeks on the TS has already sort of highlighted some of the flaws and issues with this operator. Now, in my first video, I highlighted this, which is it's still a viable thing. And it's still going to be included as number one of three different things that I want to try and break down today. So at number one, it's going to be entry fragging. Now, Iana herself, I wouldn't class as an entry fragger, but her ability to assist the entry fraggers is phenomenal. Now, just in case you're brand new to this sort of thing, an entry fragger is, as the name suggests, the first person to go bursting into the room and try and secure the kills. They're usually quite an aggressive play style, and they usually rely on a good amount of intel and very quick reflexes to be able to push into the room, assess what is going on, and then get insane shots on the defenders that happen to be in there. Now, having the ability to add an Iana into the mix means that the inherently dangerous job of being the first one to go into a room is lessened a little bit because you can send in the replicator and then very close behind that, you can send in operators like Ash. Now, what this means is that any defender that's inside of that room starts shooting at the hologram or the replicator first and their attention is drawn away from that specific door frame or entry point. As the defender follows the Iana replicator, the Ash then comes bursting in through that door frame and destroys the person really easily because they're able to follow the traces that they're seeing all the way back to that person's rifle to know exactly where they're shooting from. So this does mean that entry fragging can be a little bit less dangerous, but as I said, after a couple of weeks on the TS, you soon start to realize that people aren't going for it as much already. Now, it is right at the beginning of the season, or, you know, it's certainly in the TS, everyone is picking Iana and Oryx, and it's going to be the same for the next couple of weeks. But I really do think that this operator is going to be one of those that is similar to both Nook and Amaru. Now, if you were to play Nook every single round, people would cotton on to this quite quickly, and they'd start shutting you down. But if you haven't played her for the entire game, and then out of nowhere she appears you know, and just sneaks in past all of the cameras that are set up, she could be really effective. And I kind of think that Iana is going to sort of fit into this mix as well. The person playing Ash is no longer just going to go rushing into the room blindly. If you out of nowhere have a random rush round in which the Iana goes in first and then Ash follows closely, I think that could be really effective. If you're running it every single round, people are going to know that you're running Iana and they're going to start paying attention to this and it will become less and less effective as they just ignore that, knowing that the second person coming in is going to be the entry fragger. With this in mind, that leads me on to tip number two. Now, this second one is a bit of an all or nothing. It really is. I find it to be more effective in, you know, 1v whatever situations than I do as a 5v5. Any player worth their salt is going to shoot the replicator when they see it. They will just shoot it straight away and won't even worry about it. If you've been sat near somewhere and you hear her go on to it, that's all the more reason to just ignore it, though. Now, there have been several situations, certainly on stream, where I've heard someone go on to the Iana replicator and pretty much just ignored it. And the more I found myself doing this, the more I started to realize, what if that's not her on the replicator? Do you know what I mean? What if I'm just making assumptions that it is? And what if there is a way to actually cancel going into the hologram and pretending to be her? So that's when I started messing around doing exactly that. If you press the gadget button and once the hologram starts building itself, you press it again, you make all of the audio sounds and cues to make it sound like you're going onto the replicator, but you're not. 
So as the defender expects the replicator to come running around the corner and can come running to try and find you, the actual, you know, real Iana sat there completely helpless and unable to do anything. They're not met by the replicator. They're met by you ready with the weapon out. Now, what I have done is I've attempted to try and find different ways to showcase this and I can sort of showcase it in a custom game and it doesn't really do it any justice. And whilst there are specific rounds in which I'm 100% confident that it has worked, there's nothing really I've got yet that shows it other than this one in the background. Now, unfortunately, it didn't work out for me, but the trick itself is nevertheless still viable. As you'll see, I've got the round down to a 1v1 and the mozzie is the last one left. Now, I know he is ridiculously close. I know he's going to hear this and I pretend to go onto the replicator hoping he's going to peek me and he does exactly that. Now, unfortunately, my health was too low to deal against that super shorty shotgun, but nevertheless, the tactic still remains viable. The second I pretended to go on this, he decided to peek me and I was ready and waiting for him. Now, I'll be the first to admit this clip doesn't showcase it in the best light. It really doesn't. But nevertheless, the tactic still works. Pretending to go on it and then being the real Iana and go running somewhere, people are probably just going to ignore you. Or if they don't, it's going to give you that split second advantage where they hesitate in their mind to think oh, it's only the replicator. Definitely give this one a go. I, I guarantee Certainly in 1v however many situations, it's going to be more effective than you think. Speaking of clutch situations, this brings us on to tip number three. And if you keep an eye on Twitter or you follow Macy J, you will be well aware of this. And this is probably the strongest way to play Iana and her gadget. So I'm sort of trying to showcase it in the background. What you're going to see is as and when the diffuser, for example, in this area here gets planted, it doesn't have to be in these situations, but it's just a good showcase. But the diffuser gets planted roughly here and then as and when I move across the door frame to the left hand side I make sure the defender sees exactly where I am or has a bit of an idea and then I come off the replicator and I'm on the opposite side of the door. Now if you're a defender in that sort of a situation where you think you know where someone is and you go peeking to the right and they're over to the left that's going to be really really difficult to go against purely down to the fact that if you are the defender in a clutch situation even if it's a 1v1 iana's replicator kind of puts it in a 1v2 if you use this gadget effectively you can quite literally bait people to think you are one place when you are in fact somewhere else much like being able to stand up on top of something you get that split second advantage where they're aiming at the wrong place or the wrong height you will very often see very good players do this they will jump up on top of tables boxes whatever they can get on top of um, just so they elevate themselves and as you come round, aiming at head height expecting to land that nasty headshot you're in fact aiming at someone's knees due to their elevated position and subsequently your shots do a lot less damage than theirs using iana in this way is very very similar to that being on one side of a door frame when you're on the opposite side or being at a completely separate door while you are peeking a different window it can be incredibly strong and it completely baits the defender into going the wrong way so if you haven't seen the macy j clip the long story short of what happened was he came in planted the diffuser around about here and then went to this side of the door frame once he had done that he sent the replicator past the door and was pretty much just making sure that people saw him over here as the jaeger came running around he disappeared to this side of the door frame the Jaeger came running out looking for him and he was able to just shoot him in the back as he came out. It was, you know, it was a ridiculously effective strat in which, you know, you see someone over there, you think you know where they are, you come to peek and they're stood behind you, killing you. So that's one way to use it. Another way that people need to put more effort into is thinking about different lines of sight and the different ways they can enter. So this particular spot on coastline is a perfectly viable area to explain this. Because it's quite common that this doorway would already be open, you can make all sorts of noise or let people know that you're over here. And then as and when you do, you can jump in through the window and deal with that person from a different angle. At the minute, everyone's sending it in through the door frame they want to go in through. As they wanted to push into the lobby, for example, they would come to here, the replicator would die, and then a quick follow-up comes from the real one where they're already expecting it. If a door frame is already open and you're sending things round a slightly longer way if you're adamant there's someone in there you know there's someone just over there 
and you're able to send the replicator round the long way, that can be huge. They're going to think you're coming from this side. They think you're coming from the bathroom. They'll hear all the noise. You make a load of noise over here. And as they expose themselves, you come and deal with them effectively. Now, I understand most people's reservations about Iana. She is a bit of a weird one because she doesn't come bringing a massive amount of utility, unlike operators like Buck, Zofia, someone like that, in which they've got that niche utility that is going to be effective on pretty much every site. Iana is a weird one. She fits into a weird place in the game, similar to Nook. Um, I would say similar to Amaru as well, although people don't really put much um, value in Amaru at all due to the, the high levels of sound that it makes. But if you pick her sparingly, I think she could be really effective. And hopefully, by being able to implement some of these tips and tricks and these ideas and ways to use her, it's going to give you a few different options in those situations. The purpose of this video is to just give you a little bit of food for thought so that you can go away, find decent places to try this stuff out and just try and implement it. I would love to see the meta sort of evolve with her and shift and I'd like to see her become more useful than just running through a door frame and then following the replicator up through that same doorway. Try and think outside of the box and see where you can get. I'm afraid that's going to be it for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and as I say, hopefully it does give you something to think about. If you did enjoy the video or if you did learn anything at all from it, please consider hitting that thumbs up. If you don't already, make sure to subscribe for all things Rainbow Six. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, stay reckless and relentless.